My name is James Madison. I'm here to talk about multi-valued dimensions and it pertains to a system designed to track legal cases. Um, when a change occurs in the case, uh, a factor always produced so that we can capture the event from the real world and in so doing there will be multiple parties involved and multiple roles. A party is essentially a person, um, so you might have John Smith, Sarah Jones, etc and those parties might be in various roles, so lead attorney, uh, claimant, etc. Um, so for any given fact row, we will have multiple parties, multiple roles, and there's a connection between those parties and roles. Um, so we want to know that John Smith is a lead attorney in this particular case, uh, or the assistant attorney in another case, etc. So there is a connection, and that puts an interesting twist on the model. Um, so that's the problem we're trying to solve. Now, we have to do it with multi-value dimensions because, again, you can have multiple parties or mul and <laughs> multiple roles uh, for any given fact row. And so we need to represent this with multi-value dimensions, which are a little bit complicated in their implementation. Uh, logically, however, they are quite simple. Um, just as we would represent single-value dimensions by putting the fact table in the middle and then putting the dimensions around it in star form, we do the same thing with multi-value dimensions. Um, I don't show any more than the two here. You can envision where the other ones would go, but uh, here we have the fact table in the middle, the party dimension and the role dimension uh, and the points of the star, and we draw the lines as many to many, many to many uh, to the dimensions from the fact table. Now the beauty of this simple logical model is it keeps the users happy, because remember one of the goals of dimensional modeling is to keep it simple. It's one of the values of dimensional modeling. Um, and so logically it doesn't get any more complex, it's just a, a slight cardinality shift. Um, so it can still be envisioned quite simply. Um, when you draw it on a bus matrix, it's still quite simple. Uh, it would be represented essentially the same way with the dots and the cells and, the, and so on. Um, so it's a nice, simple, logical model, which helps us preserve that simplicity of a dimensional model. Um, however, physically, it's a little more complicated. Physically, we have uh, two tables we're going to have to introduce in between the fact and the dimension. So let's walk through those. In this case, you'd have a case fact and you'd have any number of dimensions on it that's represented by the um, rows go or the uh, lines going off into oblivion over here. Um, but the important one is this particular one. Now I've abbreviated party and role as PR just to fit it on my whiteboard. Um, but you would have a party role group table that you would introduce. And instead of the fact table going to the dimension directly, it will go to this group table. The group table has a primary key, PRG ID, that's uh, party role group ID, and we put that key into the fact table. So that is a foreign key out to the group table. And here I represented it with a data value of 7 just so you can see it uh, with a particular example of data. So what we've done is we've now connected the fact and the group using the same cardinality structure we do with single value dimensions. So recall with a single value dimension you have one on the dimension side and multiple on the fact side. Um, same thing here. One group and multiple fact. Um, that's important because we want to preserve the basic behavior of the dimensional model. So now we're pointing the uh, fact table to the group table, and that makes that connection. Um, we then have to introduce another table of overhead, which is the bridge table. The bridge table will have in it the ID from the group table. So here we have PRG ID, which is, again, the primary key of the group. And we put that into the bridge table. That gives us connection there. The bridge table then also has the ID or the key of the dimension that it needs to connect to. So in this case, we want to connect to party. Now, ignore role for just a minute. If you only had one multi-value dimension, you'd still need the group table, you'd still need the bridge table, but the bridge table would only have the primary key of the group table and the primary key of the dimension in question. So the basic design is take the fact table, connect it to the group table, connect it to the bridge table, connect it to the dimension. And that's how you get the connection to a multi-value dimension. Um, that's industry standard form. It is a little bit complex. It's unfortunate, but it's the way it is. Um, in this particular case, though, as you recall in our domain, we have two multi-value dimensions, but we also noted they are connected. So a party and a role will have a connection in any particular case um, so we can actually connect them together. So I tried to simplify the model a bit. So rather than having two group tables, because if you had two completely independent multi-value dimensions, you'd have two group tables, two bridge tables, um, and then connections to the dimensions. In this particular case, I simply put the two bridge tables together. And so now I have the group ID and the ID from one of the dimensions, the ID from the other one of the dimensions, into a single bridge table, and that connects to now both dimensions. 
Um, and again, you can see here the connection. I have the keys 4283 112, 4283 112. Um, put any number of attributes on the dimensions you need, just like you normally would. So in this case, we can see, you know, party 21 is John, and so on and so on. Um, join it all together, and it gives you the connection to all the data that you need. That is how you would represent multi-value dimensions, um, and this, in this particular case, is how you would represent two multi-value dimensions simultaneously. Now, a couple of key discussion points here. Um, one is multi-value dimensions, as you can see, are a little bit complex physically. You do have to introduce the group table and the bridge table. Um, therefore, you should try to eliminate multi-value dimensions whenever possible. Um, either split up the fact table or um, you know, introduce, to introduce multiple fact tables, um, or do other things that you might possibly consider. Uh, there's various techniques, but try to see if you can eliminate the multi-value dimension. Uh, in this case, you can't, because the legitimate grain of this fact table is a change on the case. And there's no way to twist and turn it to eliminate the fact that there are multiple parties and multiple roles uh, anytime there's a change in the case. We want to track those multiple parties and multiple roles. So this case, is this situation, is a legitimate example of having uh, multi-value dimensions and, in fact, having two of them. Um, and as it says in Kimball's book and other literature, um, there are cases, there are simple realities where the fact grain legitimately does have multi-value dimension. So don't undertake the multi-value dimension lightly, but if you do need to do it, go ahead and do it. Um, an alert viewer of this will say, hey, wait a minute, that looks like snowflaking. Um, first of all, my compliments to anyone who says that, um, but it, this is an example of good snowflaking. Strictly speaking, snowflaking is not just putting a bunch of tables hanging off of a fact. It, visually, it looks like that. Snowflaking strictly is normalizing a dimension that could be denormalized. Um, in this particular case, this is legitimate breaking up of tables. It is the right way to represent it. Um, snowflaking is really about something that could be a single table, but someone tried to normalize it. So um, if it looks like a snowflake, it's good to worry about that. But in this case, it's one of the uh, two major reasons you can so so-called snowflake, the other one being outrigger tables, um, which are an entirely separate discussion. But if this looks like a snowflake and feels like a snowflake, yeah, it does, I'll grant you that. Uh, but it's for the purpose of representing a construct that really there is no better way to represent. So this is a legitimate use of snowflaking, if you even call it that. Purists will point out this is actually not snowflaking. It just feels like it. There's an interesting thing to observe here, which is your bridge table has many's on the bridge table side and one's on the other table side. If you look at that visually, that's the same thing you get with fact tables. As you see up here, a fact table has the many's on the, on the fact table side and one's going out of it. Um, interestingly enough, one could argue that a bridge table on steroids becomes a, a fact, even if it's a factless fact. Um, you're right, and in fact, in this larger model that this came from, um, we do in fact have a fact table uh, that connects party and role for the purpose of party role analysis. So. Um, it's not necessarily redundant with it, though. It serves a slightly different purpose. The purpose of the bridge, even though it starts to have, an, a, 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 potentially if you had three or four of these, have lots of uh, foreign keys that make it look like a, a, a fact table, it's different because its purpose is simply to allow the join from the fact to the role. Um, so it's not quite the same, even though I'm sure a lot of your ETL logic can be reused both to build this bridge and to build a party role fact table if necessary. Um, as I mentioned, multi-value dimensions are complex. Um, but you do have to accept some complexity. Uh, this is one of those situations where it would be nice if it was simpler, but um, I don't care how you twist it, this is how it has to be built. Um, it's industry standard form, uh, as just my personal opinion. I can't see a better way to do this. I'm sure if, uh, if I could, Ralph Kimball would have seen it years ago. Um, so this is pretty much the way you have to do it. Um, observe that the group table might grow pretty fast. It's entirely possible that there's a different group for every fact row. Um, I know that when tables that hang off a fact table grow as fast as the fact table, we should all worry a little bit, uh, but I think this is a situation where a fast-growing table uh, is, again, part of the design as the way it will be. Um, if you need to move strings up, for lack of a better way to phrase it, feel free. In other words, if party and role are sufficiently complex and they have enough of their own attributes, fine, leave those attributes down on the party and role dimensions. But if, for the sake of simplifying the querying, you want to move just a few attributes up from party and role uh, into the bridge table so that the BI tools and other things can query them more easily, that's a possible uh, shift on the design. So move a like, party name up to here, up to the bridge table, even though you'd leave most of the other party attributes down in the dimension. Um, just a thought, just to, to help kind of simplify it, because again, um, there's some complexity here. 
Um, and then just an FYI, um, if I had to judge this on a scale of 1 to 10 of uh, the uh, challenge level of solving a problem like this, uh, this is probably an 8 out of 10. This is one of the harder aspects of dimensional modeling. Multi-value dimensions are um, a little bit tricky to work with. Um, personally, I kind of don't like them because they're complex, so I, even though I should entertain them more often, I was like, no, I don't want to do a multi-value dimension. No, I really don't want to do it. I kind of you know, work in denial for a little bit, and then I finally give up and do it. Um, but then also, even once you do it, um, they are a little bit tricky, and seeing things like the connection we have here, where we actually use a single bridge table, a single group table, uh, things like that are, can also be a little complex. So um, dimensional modeling, I think, is one of those things where it's very easy for users, but it does put some pressure on the modeler, um, and this is one of the harder uh, things you can deal with, that is the multi-value dimension. So um, bottom line is, multi-value dimensions um, definitely are a legitimate part of dimensional modeling. Um, logically, we can keep it simple, uh, but physically, you do have to introduce the group and the bridge table, and when you do, uh, the model works beautifully, though it does have some complexity to it.